Yo, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here and welcome to the channel. So in today's video, we are going to discuss everything you need to know about advanced movement mechanics in ESO and we're starting right now. And before we dive on into the bread and butter of today's video, a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members who keep this channel afloat. The best way to support the channel is with a simple like and sub, but if you want to go a little bit further and become an absolute Chad, we do have YouTube memberships enabled as well as Patreon. Some of the benefits include emojis, shoutouts, in each and every single one of my videos links to private discord channels and one-on-one pvp coaching so if you're feeling a little bit lost a little bit stuck everything is down in the description below now let's get into the video welcome back guys and let me preface this by saying if any of the terms you're about to hear sound made up such as phasing turntabling plane jumping well that's because they are ESO has been out for eight long years and there's simply no terminology to describe these movement mechanics. So here in this video, we are just going to assign said terminology just so it's easier to follow along. I had to shed the jacket guys, get a little hot in here, you know what I mean? But uh, anyways, the very first mechanic I wanna to talk to you guys about today is called phasing. So what exactly is phasing? Well, phasing is your ability to move in and out of other players character models now in eso there is no character model collision whatsoever so you can actually use that to your advantage all right so here we are in cold harbor and i'm going to show you guys how you can use this to your advantage so notice what i'm doing here while i'm doing my buddy so my character is able to move fluently throughout their character model so what does that mean in terms of advantage so a lot of spells in eso probably like half of them you either have to have a reasonable amount of aim as in looking at them or they at least have to be in a certain cone radius in front of you to the side 180 degrees in front of you whatever so take a look i'm able to completely phase through my opponent with one little step one little step can put me on the opposite end of the 180 degree angle so for example if you try to dawn breaker and I literally take one step inside your character model and go behind you, that Dawnbreaker is going to miss completely. So in addition to having flat mitigations, resistances, roll dodging, you can use phasing to your advantage as well to mitigate damage because quite frankly, your opponents just won't be able to target you. Okay, so the next mechanic I want to mention to you guys is something I did not coin myself. This has been around since the good old Call of Duty days, which is called bee hopping or bunny hopping. So what bee hopping is, it is a way to preserve your momentum. For example, if you have major expedition, increasing your movement speed by 30%, or if you're riding your horse, or if you have some other movement boosting effect, while the effect ends, there is a way to extend that effect as long as you jump in the air at the tail end of the effect. And you can also apply this to roll dodges and slowing effects on your character. So in the clip I'm going to show you guys is a 1vx I got abusing the b hop mechanic with a set called Iron Blood. So Iron Blood is very, very strong. It gives you a 30% mitigation buff, but it also applies a 40% movement speed debuff. But don't worry, you can use b hopping to get around that debuff completely. So what you want to do in order to do a b hop, or at least most effective in this way, you'll want to sprint, roll dodge, jump okay as soon as you hit the ground do not spam jump while you're in the air because it will shift you it and it will override it as soon as you are about to hit the ground jump again and if timed correctly you can maintain your speed that you had from your roll dodge and carry that into your next jump even though you have a 40 percent slow on you okay so here i am taking a lot of heat from dc as you can see now the only way for me to really get out of this is the line of sight so pay attention to what's going on so right here i'll go ahead and pause the video right here this is my buff timer that i am using to indicate the iron blood is active so during this activation i now have a 40 percent movement speed slow on top of whatever movement speed slows are already applied to me but don't worry we have to be hopping to get around that so i'll let the clip play out I roll dodge once, I'm able to still maintain my sprint momentum right after the roll dodge, even though I have very little stamina left. And even though I'm slowed by at least 40%, I'm still able to carry my momentum from my roll dodge to get behind this tree just in the nick of time to turn this fight into a nice clean 1v4. So let me rewind this clip a little bit and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. So right here, I'm getting fossilized. You can see by this indicator right here. So I immediately break free roll dodge right here. I'm holding down sprint 
and I'm roll dodging. I do not jump here, okay? Pay attention, sometimes you want to jump, sometimes you don't necessarily have to jump. The only important thing is, is if you time your jump perfectly right after you finish your roll dodge. So I'm sprinting, hold sprint the entire time, you want to roll dodge, and at the very tail end, as soon as you come out of your roll dodge, if you time your jump very, very precisely. See right here, I had a little bit of fall time I had to account for as well because I rolled off of the cliff right here. I had a little bit of fall time I had to account for for my jump. So I'm still maintaining this momentum as I'm falling. So I actually had to delay my jump timing in order to successfully pull off this B hop. So notice as soon as I hit the ground, I jump again and it allows me to carry my momentum as if I'm still roll dodging or falling. If you guys are interested in how this clip plays out, I have a short on my channel called How to Abuse Iron Blood and it will show you the tail end of this engagement. As you can see, they're starting to drop like flies, so yeah. So the third mechanic we're going to go over is Fate Swaps or Fate Cast, however you want to say it. So what this is, this is a way to avoid the animation of your spells. So back in the old school ESO, you used to be able to block cancel or bar swap cancel or literally animation cancel every single spell in the game. Now, since the game has developed, a lot more sets are put in the game, a lot more skills, and a lot of players were able to push your actions per minute very, very high from what it is now. So as ESO is right now, there's about a one second global cooldown in between each spell. If you finish your cast animation for one spell, it's about one second before you can cast the next one. Well, this way allows you to bypass that a little bit. So it is very, very easy. And with a little bit of practice, a little bit of timing, you'll be able to get it down. So essentially you're able to completely cancel your cast animations for any spell that you cast with a simple roll dodge. So you'll notice in all my 1VX videos on my DK, literally every other roll dodge that I do, I am casting a spell literally seemingly in the middle of my roll dodge. And this is how. So notice you're not even seeing my cast animation for Vigor or Mines, and this allows for a lot of sneaky plays as well. If no one sees the cast animation for your Mines, you can actually leave a trail behind you for people to fall into. And on occasion, you can completely one-shot someone if you put your Mines in a tight enough corridor. So the advantage of Fade Swapping is that it allows you to have a higher actions per minute. And if you have a higher actions per minute, meaning you're casting more spells, more healing, more damage per minute, then your overall efficiency goes up as well. So what would normally take me one second to cast an ability, another second and a half for roll dodge, and another second to cast an ability, I can literally combine roll dodging and casting ability into a one and a half second roll dodge interval. So instead of taking two and a half seconds to complete a roll dodge and ability, I'm now able to complete that ability in one and a half second. Okay, so the fourth mechanic I want to talk about today is called turntabling. So this is kind of a niche mechanic in ESO, but it is applicable to literally everyone who's watching this video. So what turntabling is, if you've ever noticed in ESO, there are roots and then there are stuns. If you get rooted in place, whether it be by a sorcerer's ink case or a dragonite's talents, notice that you cannot turn your character model. You can turn your camera around all you want, but your character model remains basically the same. So what are some disadvantages of this? Some skills like Dawnbreaker, Streak, it doesn't matter where your camera angle is looking. If your character, your model is not facing in that direction, that is not the direction that that skill will fire. And here's a case in point where I'm trying to streak with my camera pointed in some direction and notice my character model is streaking to where I'm actually looking at, not necessarily where my camera angle is looking at. And here we are at Dawnbreaker, exact same concept. Here I am looking to the side to cast my Dawnbreaker, but my character physically cannot turn to cast the Dawnbreaker, so therefore the cone is going in front of my character model, not where I'm actually looking with my camera. So how in the world do we go about avoiding this? Now there are a few ways, I'm not going to get into the very, very niche ways that you can turn your character model while you're inside of Talons or a Root, but I'm going to go over the ones that are applicable to anyone that literally anyone can do. So some skills like Engulfing Flames, for example, will actually turn your character model toward where your camera is actually facing prior to casting it. Now, not everyone is a Dragonite, I realize that, but you can, however, Medium Attack Weave. So Medium Attack Weaving is a hybrid between Light Attack Weaving and Heavy Attack Weaving. It's very easy to do, you just simply channel your heavy attack just let go before you complete your fully charged heavy attack and in so doing your character will actually now turn toward your target on its own 
Now this works with every single weapon type except dual wield that I tested. It works with great swords, it works with staves, it works with bows. It does not work, however, with bashing, unarmed combat if you're an absolute meme lord, okay? So again, you can clearly see the advantage of this. For example, if you're on the sword and you need to streak in a specific direction and you're not able to because you're rooted and you don't want to necessarily roll dodge to remove the root prior to streaking, well, you can just simply medium attack weave in the direction that you want to streak to and then streak. So the fifth advanced move mechanic I want to bring up is called plane jumping. Yes, I completely made this term up, but it does what it says it does. So what is plane jumping? So this is easily seen on the sorcerer. Now the sorcerer has access to an ability called Shriek. It is a short range teleport that does not have any verticality to it whatsoever, but there is a way to give it a vertical component, allowing you to cross much greater distances. In the clip here in the background, you can see when I streak from ledge to ledge, it goes on the same plane, hence the name of plane jumping. So you streak, I get wall blocked by the raised elevation of the plane and I'm not able to go anywhere. So there are two different ways that I know of that you can actually extend this verticality and also the range. Now, if you take what we learned from bee hopping, sprinting before you actually passed your streak, you can actually climb this elevation. So your momentum will technically be preserved just a little bit even so after the streak. So having the sprint animation will apply to when you finish your streak, allowing you to hurdle over this elevated plane. Also, there's a more advanced technique. So when you streak, whatever plane you are on, after you finish your streak, it does not matter if you're in the air. ESO still recognizes it as you still being on the ground. So you can actually add a jump to the tail end of your streak. So you can see in the clips here that I'm easily able to get over this wall without having to jump at the end. But notice when I step a little bit further back, right? Normally, you cannot make this jump with just a streak and sprint. You have to add a jump at the very end of the streak. So if done correctly, you can actually come all the way back here on the wall, streak and jump, and you're able to carry that momentum and get over this obstacle a lot easier. So this is kind of specific to the sort, yes I know, but this is still applicable to a lot of gap closers as well, not necessarily streak alone. So the very last point I want to go over with you guys today is auto jumping. So you may notice when you fight a lot of sorcerers or kind of any other class that's ranged, that they are constantly, constantly jumping if they're like a high enough tier player. So why in the hell are they even doing this to begin with? So to us veteran players, this is kind of like a nervous tick that we do just to keep our hands fresh, you know, and jumping around. But it actually does have some advantages, but it also, also, also has some big disadvantages if used incorrectly. So people auto jump in the event that they do get crowd controlled or stunned in the air, just like bee hopping, you can maintain your momentum in the air. Okay, so here we are back at Cold Harbor. I'm gonna show you an extreme example of how this is really helpful. It's kind of hard to think about on like small scale, like, you know, big deal, you jump up like two feet and you're gonna travel like it, an extra six inches or units of measure, whatever they're using in the ESO, yeah, who cares? But in the event that you are in this situation, it can make a big deal. So take a look at my buddy Spuzzy here. I'm about to run and jump off the edge. I mean, if you're an open world serial, you're going to be jumping off rocks and ledges quite often. So this very first clip, I'm actually running, sprinting like anyone would, and he CCs me. Look, I'm stuck on the edge. While I'm stuck here on the edge, I'm going to take amalgamation of extra damage that I would not have to take. And here's why. So I'm reenacting the exact same scenario, but instead I'm adding a jump right at the end of the ledge. Notice when he CCs me, I'm still carrying my momentum and that allows me to get to a whole nother plane, a whole nother section of map, a whole nother 1VX spot without literally doing anything. But the snafu is you cannot break CC until you hit the ground. So sometimes this will work in your favor and sometimes it'll get you killed. That's all folks. Anyways, if you found any information in this video at all helpful, I would really appreciate a like and sub. I will get on my hands and knees and beg if you need me to, guys. So thank you all so much for watching till the end. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.